Marty Schwartz gets a signature. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. Today we're documenting Marty's new signature Epiphone ES-335, which I thought was a fun new signature model because he definitely deserves it. If you're not familiar with Marty's work, he's one of the OG music lesson YouTubers. In the early days where there were not a lot of good lessons, his videos stood out on top, people flocked to them, and they learned a lot. But February 19th of 2020, Marty actually visited Gibson, thinking that he was just going to see how his dream guitar in ES-335 335 was built. However, at the end of that episode, they actually gift him a 335 figured, which he's then continued to use. So that's why in August of 2023, we get this signature Epiphone that's based on it. Personally, I think this was a great fan service. Let's see it. Oh, wow. That is a very figure top. So at first glance, when these came out, I was like, okay, I'm kind of scared how well these will sell. But then the further you get into the specs of them, you start to go, wow, they actually do make a lot of sense. So at its core, it's basically a 1963 Epiphone reissue figured ES-335. That's what we were just talking about here on the top. You've got the flame maple figuring, but then you also have it on the back. Now the cherry finish, it kind of gets bleached out in the camera, but trust me, it's there. It's pretty nice. And it'll vary example to example, but it looks like we get a little bit of figuring on the side as well. And a lot of guys were saying, ah, I hate that it was specced with a slim C neck profile. But first impressions here, it's actually a lot more rounded than I was expecting. Definitely not like SG thin. But we've got our 63 block style inlays making this one a little bit more special. So how much were these brand new? They were $899. But you gotta think about it. It's a signature guitar, so the artist should get a royalty. It's a 335 styled instrument since it requires a lot of labor to create these things. They're not as cheap as some other solid bodies. But look at this. It even has a hard shell case at that price. I was not necessarily expecting that. It's regular Epiphone humbuckers, but you do have coil splitting on them. So that's a little bit fancy because I'm sure he could have specced it with USA pickups, but a lot of times these higher end Epiphones sound pretty good, but then the price would have been like $11.99 and then it would have seemed too expensive. So I think if you're in the market for a 335, so far I'm impressed at that price because you got to remember, Marty's main demographic are beginner guitar players who probably don't have a huge budget. Now, that's not saying $8.99 is cheap, but it could be within reach of many of them. And then his other demographic would be nostalgic guys over his lessons that have gotten good at guitar and are looking for the next thing in their collection, or they want to step up from that cheap $200 whatever they bought. So it targeted his niche very well. However, if you could care less about Marty Schwartz, is this the guitar for you? There's just one thing you'd probably want to know about. You do have his outline of his iconic hat and beard, which I think is cool. But if you don't know who that is, yeah, maybe that would be a turnoff for someone. But I just now realize this also has locking Grover tuners. That's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and throw this one on the workbench to take an individual look at its parts and specs. Inside our Epiphone 335, let's check out these pickups. For our neck is the Elmico Classic Pro humbucker, and the same thing is true for the bridge position. And inside our neck pickup cavity, we have a sticker with our QR code and serial number. And if you peel the sticker up a little bit, you can see our long neck tenon construction. And hey, there's a good area to see our mahogany neck as well as right there, but what we're seeing in this area is the maple center block. Throughout our teardown section, just in case you're curious what makes this Epiphone different from his actual Gibson one that he uses, I'll point out some of the differences, such as Epiphone makes their guitars a little bit differently. So normally Gibson has a three-ply layer for the top, it's a maple poplar maple sandwich, but this one actually has a five-ply maple top. So you can see all the individual layers right there as they sandwich them together for extra strength. And the cavities are actually really nice and well-crafted and sanded down, except for in the areas where it's not. This wood is like extra sharp. I got poked pretty bad by one. Here's some more of that maple center block. Now let's talk our electronics. Two volumes, two tones, pretty standard in that aspect. Bridge pickup breed 7.68k ohms. Neck position 7.64, and our middle just for fun, 3.83. Don't forget, your volume pots actually have a split coil feature, so you can get single coil tones out of it. Hey, Trogly from the future. It also has in and out of phase on this knob, that's cool. Which I think is great for an intermediate level guitar like this. It helps it make it be a little bit more versatile if you're trying to learn a song that Marty's teaching you that has slightly more single coil tones and you don't happen to have a single coil equipped guitar. 
So our construction is slightly different. Obviously, you've got different pickups in it, different types of bridges and hardware. But our next biggest difference here has to be the poly finish versus having the true nitro. That's what gives Epiphones their signature feel, and it also makes it so they don't age as much. You typically don't get a whole bunch of finish checking or anything like that unless you have like actual cracked finish. And there's other fine details that you wouldn't really notice unless you've had the Gibson variation, like the F-hole stylings, just very different. But speaking of our bridge, it's just your typical Epiphone Loctone series. It's not actually a locking bridge, it just refers to these little barbs that are inside there that helps it stay secure. Same thing is true on our tailpiece. You can see the tabs there a little bit easier. It helps it stay in place during string changes. And yes, if you were curious, this is what it would look like if you just left the pick guard off. But here's what the guard looks like. It's multiply and it's one of the glued on bracket versions. And this is kind of cool. The sticker inside the F-hole reads inspired by Gibson Marty Schwartz ES335 with our serial number again. So let's break out the endoscope to see more. So we'll start by going in this F-hole. So what we're looking at right here is the maple side which is also pressed in form, just like the top. And then we have our kerfing along the edge, just to give it more surface area to glue onto. And that continues all along the side. And then running along the right side here, that is our straight up maple center block. And then you've got two pieces of wood on top, one over here and one on the bottom. That is a spruce bracing. And that continues all the way down and it's two separate chambers on here. As far as these go, it's actually fairly clean. But now let's check out our electronic side. Pretty much just more of the same stuff, except for now we have other things in our way. But it does not look like we're getting pot upgrade or anything. In fact, it looks like they're using a quick connect system for our pickups. Which honestly, since they're not using back plates on these, that makes complete sense to me. So overall, pretty nicely figured top. The only dead spot that I noticed is like right where the bridge and tailpiece are, so not that big of a deal. But moving on from our body, we've got the mahogany neck and an Indian laurel fretboard. Everything's fairly standard here with 22 frets. We've got acrylic inlays on this one. They're the small blocks. And obviously we would have the rosewood fretboard on the true Gibson. Regular 12 inch fretboard radius and 24 three quarter inch scale. I measure a 1.69 inch nut width, which increases to 2.09 by the 12th. First fret neck depth 0.85 and 0.96 by the 12th. Here's that neck profile at the first fret and the 12th fret. And now our headstock. I had a very strange situation. This has never happened to me before. So here's our truss rod area, right? Everything's okay with that, but our truss rod cover, that is not a piece of cloth from my cleaning process. That's part of the truss rod cover. It literally snapped off the bottom portion of it. And the only thing I could think of is maybe they applied it to the headstock veneer when the lacquer hadn't completely dried yet. Because when I took the screws out, this was still stuck. So I tried to lift it up by this and slowly prying it, and it's still stuck to it. That's very unusual. Like sometimes dust and grime will cause that to stick a little bit, but with a little bit of pressure, it'll come off. But no, that's still stuck to it. Now, can you tell? No. Does it affect anything? No. But I thought it was kind of humorous. Everything else is just our regular stuff with our acrylic Epiphone logo, as well as our crown inlay. That's another difference. The Gibson would have a real mother of pearl and a slightly different headstock shape. Moving on to the back, you can see our beautiful flame maple figuring. And again, you'll notice no back plates. That's just how ES-335s are crafted. In case it's your first one, typically they wire it up and then they fish it all through the bridge pickup cavity and use the F-holes to kind of help guide them as well. And they just put them in place. But not every semi-hollow guitar is constructed that exact same way. We've got a strap button down here and one at the base of the neck. And here's another major construction difference. If you look right here, you can actually see a completely different piece of wood crafting the heel of our neck. It's a little bit darker in hue. And then as we go up our neck, we see another piece right here. This is called a scarf joint. So you got two scarf joints. So this is not a one piece neck. Yeah, it kind of depends how you look at it. I mean, technically the neck is one piece, but the heel has another piece and then our headstock. But as is typical with Gibson and Epiphones, they have our headstock wings on the side to create that iconic shape. But yes, just in case you're curious, these stickers, they do come off. The Marty one does not. That's underneath the finish. And if we really get up in their case, I'm not sure if that decal is supposed to have that distressed look to it. It could just be the style that they were going for, or that could be an error, I'm not sure. But here's where we can see the locking tuners. 
just a nice feature to have. Because if you don't know how to wrap strings properly, locking tuners can help you get that. And even if you do know how to do them properly, locking tuners generally are just faster. So technically that's an upgrade even over the Gibson. And all said and done, it's just a hair under eight pounds. Let's go ahead, plug it in, and hear how it sounds. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but that's a very versatile Epiphone. So your neck pickup, nice and juicy. That's too full, you split it. You need it a little bit crunchier, you go to that bridge. You can also do that same thing with split. Gets a little bit more of a country twang to it. But if they want to play nicely together, full on sounds like this. And you can play around with neck split or bridge split and then both of them split when in your middle position. Or just split both of them. Then again with your out of phase. Gives you a quacky tone. And of course you can mix that with your coil splits. It just gets really thin. There's nothing wrong with these pro buckers. They sound great.
Now that we know all about the Marty Schwartz signature ES-335 figured, what are my final thoughts on this? That's yeah, pretty much what I thought it was going to be. It's a very nice Epiphone at a very appropriate price. That out of phase switch was definitely a surprise. I wasn't expecting that, so it was a nice surprise. You're not gonna use it all the time, but it's good that it's there in case you wanna learn some Gary Moore style licks and or any of the other songs that the famous Greenie has been used for. Clean tones I thought were phenomenal out of this. Now, it did leave a bit to be desired on the Dirty Channel, so if you're gonna play a lot of distorted licks, then maybe you might want to think about upgrading your electronics. And keep in mind, since we know it's a PCB kind of quick connect system, if you plan to replace your pickups in this guitar one day, you're also gonna have to pay somebody to rewire it. And yeah, as we talked about today, that's not necessarily as easy on an ES-335 as it would be on a different guitar. But I don't think you're gonna have to replace them right away. I don't think you might even ever have to ever do it. You just might have to dial in your effects pedal and amp a different way. As far as negative things to say, it's just your regular Epiphone stuff. I mean, the frets could be polished more because they do feel a little bit scratchy out of the box. You might want to upgrade your strings, but most people change strings after a couple of weeks of having their new guitar anyway, so it's not a big deal. I think Marty spec'd this out perfectly for his core audience because yeah, 900 bucks, not bad for a name brand Epiphone this highly spec'd with a case and everything else it comes with. All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed today's review. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.